Jesus came to die for our sin, came to save us. Um, he came to suffer and die for your sin, so you don't have to. So whatever it is that you're involved with, 
can guarantee it says in the book of uh, Proverbs that sin is pl pleasurable for a season so whatever it is you know you'll get some enjoyment fleshly enjoyment out of it but you'll get addicted to it and it'll eventually kill you whatever it is drugs alcohol whatever you name it the bible says that sin leads to death and then the soul must be judged according to the word of god according to the righteousness of god has to judge us just what a righteous judge does he has to judge sin he has to judge sinful people like we are hallelujah you know religion can't save us religion is quite a good thing you know but at the end of the day it's not going to save your soul you know the bible and other religions are very clear about a blood sacrifice and that's exactly what jesus did on the cross at calvary two thousand years ago so we don't need to sacrifice any more things animals whatever it is doesn't need to happen anymore the last sacrifice that god recognized was the one of jesus christ the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the whole world hallelujah and the vedas he's spoken about as the prajapati sacrifice that's when the chief of the gods sends a part of himself to the earth to die for the sins of his people hallelujah in the quran many muslims dispute that you know god uh, allowed jesus to die well if you read surah 355 it says jesus i will cause you to die and i shall fight against those who have fought against thee that's right from the quran surah 355 and so even the quran speaks about jesus death jesus himself in surah 1933 speaks about his death and resurrection blessed is the day i was born blessed is the day i die blessed is the day i'll be resurrected that's right from the quran hallelujah and so even the quran speaks about the son of god's death and resurrection hallelujah now what does the bible say about it many jewish people will look through the scriptures and they'll say well there's nothing about the messiah dying the messiah has to be like a king who fights against israel's enemies well that's what will happen at jesus second coming but his first coming He's known as uh, Messiah ben Joseph, the suffering servant. If you read the Torah portion about Joseph, he came and he was uh, he was sold by his brothers into slavery, you know, and they lied about his death and so on. But through that, he actually was risen to the same level as Pharaoh in Egypt and he caused an entire civilization to be saved through a famine. So that story is very, very much like Jesus Christ. In the last days it talks about an antichrist coming wanting to give humanity a, a microchip or a mark on their forehead or their right hand and to bow down and worship his image and so that's what the bible says and it's not very far away if, if you look at the technology we have but uh jesus comes at the point when this this whole thing is building up and then the faithful saints it says may be martyred or they could be raptured into heaven if you have faith in jesus christ you might miss the great tribulation you know there's there's uh teachings on that as well but the most important thing to become a christian is to develop a heart like god hallelujah what's your name Oh, I'm in a Where I'm in a Where are you? I'm in a Let me pray with you, man. Let me pray with you. What's your name? Eddie Muir. 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 Eddie Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Eddie's life, Heavenly Father. We just command every infirmity that Satan has done to leave him by the blood of the Lamb. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, me and Eddie, and we confess that we're sinners before your throne, Lord Jesus. We confess our sin before you. We ask Jesus to be our Lord and Saviour. Hallelujah, Eddie. If you want to just pray this prayer with me, brother, just pray it with me. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I know, uh, Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I, I can't save myself. I, I, I know too bad, I can't, I know, I know. 
Praise God. We, we, we repent of our sin. We ask Jesus Christ into our life as our Lord and Saviour. Thank you, Jesus. Come into our life. Cleanse us, Father. We just come against anything, Father, any disease that Eddie has right now. We rebuke it. We command it to leave his body right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Father, we just pray that every demonic influence in his life would be rebuked. The illnesses would be rebuked from his body, Lord Jesus, right now, as from this moment. That every scale, every illness would just fall right now. Leave him right now in Jesus' name. Just have faith that, that Jesus will clear it up for you. Keep praying and just have faith that he will actually clear up, he'll heal you. I would just go up, just get, just, just go up there, man. You know what I mean? Just walk in. I knew people that have been ill. Either you can depend on God to heal you, right? Or you can you can just walk up there, walk in and, and tell them your condition. They'll turn you away. Why is that? Why will they turn you away? Because I haven't seen it before, I turn you away. Why will they turn you away? I do, I do, sir. Hang about, brother. Come, come back in an hour and we'll go up, right? Preaching about the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Came to know him 20 years ago. Uh, asked him in my life to be my Lord and Saviour. Was water baptised and then spirit baptised. And so, uh, been born again for over 20 years. So I can testify that God is real. When in the Bible it talks about God being a spirit. Just as Satan's kingdom is also spiritual, based on these uh, demons, okay, that will make you sin, basically. But the Holy Spirit will keep you right, will keep you righteous, actually. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Praise the Lord. It doesn't lead us into sin. It doesn't cause us to break God's commandments. The Holy Spirit keeps us in the narrow path. It leads to life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. Hallelujah.
first time shed his blood for your sin so you can be redeemed to God by his righteousness so that his spirit can come and live inside of you no other so-called religion promises God himself only true biblical born again Christianity actually promises God himself through his spirit he says in the scriptures that no eye has seen God that's the fact a voice came out of heaven when Jesus was baptized and says listen to him this is my son in him I am well pleased no one has seen the father but the father does exist and then we get the son who is the word of God who shed his blood on the cross at Calvary for us and then we have the Holy Spirit which is the very essence of God himself referred to as a he many times in the Bible hallelujah so that just means that God yes is masculine you know when God created in his image he created Adam in his image and then he created Eve from Adam's rib that's what it says in the Bible and then according to the temptation of the serpent in the garden caused Adam and Eve to believe that they could have uh, something or be something that they couldn't be and caused them to sin and this is why we have all the problems in this world of being disconnected with God our Father you know when Jesus came he taught us how to pray to our Heavenly Father it's your Father and mine and His he created in God's image don't believe you evolved from a monkey it's all very clever, all very nice you pay thousands of pounds to go to universities and colleges to learn that you actually evolved from a rock which evolved into an amoeba and began to swam swim in the seas and then became a fish and then then grew wings and then took flight and then that bird came down grew legs started walking around i mean i've heard of some bad trips in my time but that, that just takes the biscuit and they're actually you know making people pay money for this that will actually evolve from a piece of a rock i don't know gee god is the creator there is a there is a divine creator you know and when these scientists in CERN and different places they study creation and all that stuff they become more convinced that there is a designer they don't want to call him by his name they don't want to say he's the god of the bible but at present there's a lot of believing scientists that there is a designer you know when they study the creation of god you've got all these fibonacci spirals and very very divine creation very orderly creation that, 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 that god left us with to study and there is true science don't get me wrong medicine has helped people you know we have technology a little bit helps us communicate helps us get around a wee bit but how many people could do with being healed how many people uh, could do with be feeling better about themselves feeling a bit stronger being forgiven of their sin you know what we have through jesus christ is more than that we have eternal life through jesus christ that means that we live with him forever and eternity there's no other so-called religious leader of god that can promise you that and deliver that you know religion tells you to basically face a direction pray certain prayers maybe you feel better about yourself but at the end of the day you still got your sin you still got your guilt you're still sinning against god you don't have peace with god until you actually accept jesus into your life and when you realize that every single holy book out there actually speaks of him the Vedas, the Prajapati sacrifice, you know, the, the, the final sacrifice that God gave to take away the sins of his people, only Jesus did that. Buddha didn't do that. And then you get the Quran speaking about Jesus' death and resurrection, Surah 355, Surah 1933, and it goes on. It's all in there. Hallelujah. So the, the very evidence of the fact that Jesus died and was resurrected is in all the holy books, Isaiah 53 if you're Jewish. I was speaking about that earlier on, got interrupted, but anybody needs prayer, come and see me. Most of all, do you know where you're going when you die? Do you know if there really isn't an afterlife for certain? All the religions speak about an afterlife. They all speak about an afterlife. It's just a matter of where you're going. Are you confident you're going to go to heaven? Are you sure you're going to be met by 70 virgins? Are you positive about that? You know what I mean? Well, the Bible does talk about a place where God dwells and it is in heaven. And there are several heavens. And it says the Apostle Paul was taken up to the third heaven and saw and heard things that he couldn't possibly speak of. 
In other words, it was almost impossible to verbally describe what he saw and heard. You know, we've talked about the creator of the universe. Jesus came down, gave up that throne to come down, born through a virgin, as it says in Isaiah 7.14, to come down and die for our sin. Just get wrap your mind around that. God himself did that for us. And we've been born again for 20 years. People ask me, why are you a Christian and all that stuff? Since that time, God has kept me, God has healed me of various things, various heartbreaks I've had in my life. God has came and healed me many, many times. It says uh, that's one of the things that Jesus came to do, bind up the brokenhearted um, and heal the sick and deliver the captives and preach the good tidings to the poor. All these things are what Christians are meant to do. Hallelujah. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm not a pure warm or this is why I'm not a Catholic. You know, paying tithes to somebody in the Vatican that turns all that wealth into pure gold. No. Hallelujah. Jesus says, build your wealth up into heaven where the moths can't eat your wealth, where people can't steal your stuff. Build wealth up in heaven. How do you do that? That should be, that's a very good question. Many people have asked me that. Well, be about preaching God's word. Be about doing things which please your Father in heaven. Which please the, the Father in heaven. What's that? Look after the poor. Pray for your family. You know, if you've got any sinful addictions, drug or alcohol, ask God to take these things away, these desires away from your life. As I've, I've actually asked God to do that. Smoked quite a lot, drank quite a lot. Just ask God, take these desires away overnight next morning. Don't have a desire to drink or smoke. You know what I mean? So that is possible. Everything is possible through God. You know, Jesus came and says, How long will I be burdened with this faithless generation? We got to have faith to please God. We must have faith to please God. That's one of the three things that Jesus rebuked the religious men of the day for. They lack judgment, mercy, and faith. Judgment, mercy, and faith. So we're meant to have mercy on each other, have forgiveness on each other. Hallelujah. We're meant to have faith which is which pleases God. No matter what you're facing, ask God to, to in some occasion you can just take it away, remove it from your life. You know, it says and I think it's Proverbs chapter Psalm chapter twenty four. It says, Give your burdens to the Lord and he shall sustain them. Any burdens that you have in your life, this is why Jesus died. He doesn't want you to be burdened with guilt and sin and all this stuff. He wants you to live a happy life and a productive life and a life to his glory. Hallelujah. That's the reason that we're created to give God glory. It's not so we can uh, not experience all the sins that we can and then die and then go to hell. That's not, not why we're here. We're here in order to give God glory. Hallelujah. He's here to feed us, clothe us, and basically give us power over the enemy. There is an enemy. The Bible says that there's an enemy, the God of this world, who's called Satan. Satan just means uh, adversary. So he's an adversary to us, and he's an adversary to God, because he wants to do things his way. He thinks he can do things better than God. And when you look around you in this world, how wrong, how wrong is he, you know? Sin produces death, and death, when it's... Uh, when we die, we face the judgment. Hallelujah. And so, do you know where you're going when you die? Do you know about Jesus' atonement for your sin? You may have heard of Jesus Christ. Do you know him personally? You can't ask him into your life when you repent of your sin. That's all we need to do. Very simple. And then we need to give him his, your life and just follow him.
the kingdom. They are those who wash their garments in the blood of the, the Lamb. Obviously it's not talking about Persia or something like that. It's talking about spiritual washing that takes place when the ultimate sacrifice, the Son of God, died for you when you ask him for forgiveness. It says in First John, uh, in the Bible, it says that when you ask him for forgiveness, he is faithful to forgive us faithful to forgive us. We don't need to live this uh, perfect life. Hallelujah. Yes, when we get born again, we should be closer to God. Receive the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. He wants us to live perfectly as our Heavenly Father is perfect. But when we sin, the Bible says we have an advocate in heaven. We don't need to go to a priest. We don't need to go to a pastor. If you have a problem, speak to a brother, a sister in Jesus. Hallelujah. And they'll pray for you. See many people getting healed just through just through a couple of Christians praying for someone. Very very simple. Without faith, you cannot please God. Hallelujah. So, yeah, faith is faith is a verb. Faith is something we should do physically. Put your uh, spiritual, mental, and spiritual physical trust in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To to heal you. Believe in His work. Believe in his word, it says in Isaiah 53, he was the suffering servant, and it says, by his stripes we are healed. So having faith in that statement alone, having faith in the word of God alone, brings people healing. Praise the Lord. The name Yeshua means salvation. Jesus Christ just means salvation. Deliver. It's written in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus came to deliver their people from, his people from their sins. Hallelujah. God's people from their sins. Praise God. First John 3, 4, it says, Sin is transgression of the law. Every single one of us have broken God's laws. If you're very honest, you've lied, you've stolen, you've made a promise to someone which you've broken, you've broken a Sabbath, I guarantee that. <laughs> Even if you're a Christian, if you're a Jew, it doesn't matter. You, you've broken, probably broken a Sabbath. You've probably taken the Lord's name in vain. Many people have done these type of sins, coveted, coveted things. And many people just covet things, or oh, like that, or oh, I love that thing. I love that car, that's a nice jacket you got there, that's lovely shoes. Just covet all the time. One of the Ten Commandments. Jesus says, seek my kingdom first, and all else shall be added unto you. Seek God's kingdom first, and everything you need shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Praise God.
with God, dear friends? How is your relationship with God? Do you know Jesus personally? Have you met him? Have you accepted him? Have you felt the power of God come into you through his spirit when you ask him to be your Lord and Saviour? Very, very simple. This is the gospel that the apostles preached. They didn't tell you to go to some place in Rome. 